Hello everybody, Daniel McCabe here from GI Energy and I'm here again today with Matt. Today we're talking about catch power. My role here at GI Energy is more commercial solar, so we don't use catch power typically in that scenario, but um, I'm going to learn with you today. And Matt, you love the product, I so do, um, Matt's going to tell <laughs> us about it and we're going to go back and forth and hopefully uncover some of the products, features and benefits. So Matt, tell us a bit about catch power. Sure mate. So the catch power have been making a lot of different products for a couple of years, mainly for hot water diverters, so they have the catch green, the catch blue where they work off excess solar to heat your hot water tank. Okay. So, awesome device. Um, a couple of years ago now, they developed the Catch Power Solar Relay, which they've renamed the Catch Power Control. So that's really been the main item that we've been installing for about the past 18, 24 months now as well. Okay. So it's installed um, in place generally of the Fronius Smart Meter or the SunGrown Smart Meter with the two inverters that we supply. It does also work with a couple of other brands so they've obviously dealt with those brands to incorporate a way of working together. So its main function that we really see it still working for is hot water diversion. Yep. So the reason this little thing is so cool is you have the option to set up a time window to heat your hot water tank through excess solar. Okay. So we'll set a time window from 7 a.m. till 2 p.m. ordinarily for most homes. So what we do is we tell the catch power that when there's 3.6 kilowatts of excess solar available for a 3.6 kilowatt element, which is the most common one in your tank, yes. or obviously whatever your element is, if it's 2.4 or 4.8, but we'll use 3.6 as the example. Once your system's generating an excess of 3.6 kilowatts, so over and above whatever you're consuming, so your pool, lights, fridge, whatever else is going on there, intelligently shift that power to your hot water system. Okay. So that might occur at 7.30, 8 a.m. in the summer. That might be 9, 10 a.m. in the winter when your generation is lower and utilize that solar excess the best possible way. So as you'd expect, export rates for grid feeding are a lot lower. So we want to use as much as we can ourselves. That's what I was just going to touch on because for people that are coming into solar energy new and mm. don't, haven't looked into it before, we basically don't want to sell energy back to the grid. So when we're producing power, the first job of that power is to go into appliances that are turned on in your house, Absolutely. regardless of what that is. Secondly, normally it just goes back into the grid and you're given small credits for it. But yep. you're always charged a lot more than what those credits are worth. Yep. So we always try and encourage people to use as much power as you can. So this device is basically taking that energy, diverting it into your hot water, instead of selling it back to the grid essentially and making sure that you're heating your hot water with solar power yep. rather than heating it with grid power when the solar's not there. Does that explain that? Pretty much spot on. Um, yeah, exactly right. Because, yeah, as you said, it's far more valuable. It's four, five times the mm -hmm. price of what we pay than what we receive. Yeah. So ultimately, anything and everything we can squeeze into that window. And remember, this is happening in the background. Yes. You're not doing this every day. You're not thinking, oh, I'll have a look at my monitoring. Can I turn on my washing machine yet? Can I turn on my dishwasher? Can I charge my car? This just happens in the background. It's set up at the beginning by yeah. the installer. And then if it ever needs to be adjusted, we'll educate the homeowner on how to do that, or they can give us a call and shift it. Yes. So that's the optimum. That's obviously on a nice sunny day, or maybe a moderate sunny day where there might be intervals of a bit of sun and cloud, it can shift on and off, on and off. It's not something that's gonna damage the appliance, like some other appliances that may be in the home. Yeah. If it's a really cloudy morning, rainy morning, we set a second window. Okay. So. The second window we set up from 2 p.m. at the end of obviously the primary solar through to 5 p.m. Okay. Because most hot water tanks will take up to about three hours to heat fully. Again, okay. depending on the element, size of the tank, time of year, a few variables. So then we say, okay, at 2 p.m., if that first window wasn't a complete success, we haven't filled up the hot water to 100%, now take a mix of solar and grid power to then top it up and make sure that I've got sufficient hot water to see me through to the next day, if that makes sense. It makes sense, so that's why you are basically got a safety net there to make yeah. sure that your, your, your water's hot. Because a lot of people will put a timer in, won't they, and yeah, just yeah. put it on every day on a timer, but that's just gonna come on regardless of whether your solar's working or not. So that timer's gonna kick in and start drawing power yeah. regardless, so it's gonna be drawing grid power a lot more often exactly. than something like a catch power relay. From the data we've looked at, the catch control will be over 90% effective wow. for, for South East Queensland. Okay. So on 
My system, full disclosure, I've still got a hot water timer. I okay. put a system in back in 2017. I've got a pretty large solar array over 15 kilowatts. So my timer will go on at 9 a.m. But by that time, even on a cloudy day, I'm still generating two, two kilowatts, which is what my element is. Okay. I've also got a battery. So there's other things in the mix there. But if you want the opportunity to utilize the solar generation, it's best. Yeah. Also combat export limitations as well, which is something I'll touch on after. This device does all of those things and you don't think about it. It all happens in the background. What about those colder months in the winter? Yep. I know we've explained that a little bit, but I know that's a question that people ask quite a bit is what happens in the winter yeah. when there's less soda and more need for hot water? Absolutely. So, I mean, anyone's fear is you wake up in July and there's no hot water. Yes. I know yeah. I'd be pretty upset. Absolutely. And yeah. maybe other people in my house would as well. So you can add another top up window as well. So if the solar generation and that second window of top up wasn't sufficient, or even you've got additional people in the home for a holiday period, whatever it might be, you can go into the app. There's a boost function. So you literally just tap a button and you say to boost the hot water that'll occur immediately through the system. So you, don't, you haven't got to walk out to a booster switch like you used to in the old school days. It's just all done through the app. You can then actually add a third window if need be. So you could say, okay, I'll get up at 5 a.m. I've got to get to work. Really cold at that time of year and I, I love a hot shower. Yeah. But then I might use all the hot water and then someone else in my house wants a shower at 6 a.m. And obviously half that hot water is gone. Yeah. So you can set up a third window or fourth, however many you want, okay. to do another top of power. Okay. So if you need help doing that, give us a call as well, if it's not straightforward, because this might be installed in summertime, come to win come winter six, seven months later, you've forgotten how that was done, give us a call. We can do it remotely for you as well. Yes. Yeah. So it really it's a win-win for everyone. If there's ever an issue with hot water, it's something we can assess remotely too. Yeah. Yeah, which is why we love it also. Yeah, great. So saves you going up to site if a timer fails or something's wrong with the timer. Absolutely. Um, which is not accessible remotely. Yeah. Aside from those features, um, there's also some other benefits there with this product. Yeah. Um, specifically with adding batteries to systems that are close to that or on that export limit in certain areas in the country. Can you explain how that yeah. works? Yeah, so that's something that's obviously become a little bit more prominent especially this past year or two, batteries are becoming a lot more popular. So where we are, there's a lot of systems that are installed that are 10 kilowatts, 13 kilowatts with a 10 kilowatt inverter. Yeah. On a single phase home, generally that's what the DNSP will allow you to have approved. So 10 kilowatt system installed, often with a five kilowatt export. By having the catch power in place, you can actually access in Southeast Queensland and other parts of in, in Queensland, you can access a dynamic connection so that'll allow you to have up to 10 kilowatts of export at a lot of times, plus have an AC coupled battery. Okay. That obviously has a five kilowatt inverter capacity rating as well when you're doing your grid application. So without this dynamic flexible export in place, having a Tesla Powerwall or another AC coupled battery with a five kVA rating will actually put you on a hard limit of a dynamic connection at 1.5 kilowatts without a catch power. Yeah. Introduce a catch power into the mix, and then that's relieved from you, and then you can access a flexible export. Yeah. So once your battery is full, or even if you don't have a battery, at times you can export up to 10 kilowatts of solar energy if you're not using it yourself. So you've heated your hot water, you've charged your car, whatever else has happened, and then that excess can go back into the grid just for that last little benefit from, from solar. And you can still receive something for it, basically. Everything, and it's all monitored. So it's just a great solution that covers all those bases. Mm. It is a great product and it's an intelligent product as well in terms of its progression. Yeah. So I think one of the other benefits is that um, as things improve with the product, you get that benefit even yeah. if you've purchased the hardware prior to those upgrades, is that right? Absolutely. So there's been continual firmware updates in the past couple of years that we've been supplying the product. Recently they've added the ability to smart charge a car, so similar to the hot water way we were talking about it with excess power. Yes. It's just a flexible way of charging your car from excess. If you get a nice hour of clear blue skies, lots of sunshine, that excess can drip into the car. It goes cloudy, rains for an hour, shuts off, and just follows that curve all day. So it's monitored with Fronius SolarWeb. It's monitored with SunGrow through their iSolar Cloud as well. So instead of installing the branded smart meters, the catch power is installed in the board. It does your hot water diversion or your smart charging or even a pool heat pump, something like that. 
and it also connects through for the full monitoring as well. Mm -hmm. So you get access to SolarWeb with the Fronius, you get access to iSolarCloud with the SunGrow, plus the Monocle app as well, which is Catch Power's app. So that app you can go in, that's where you adjust your hot water timings. Yes. You can see your generation graphs, your production, your consumption, battery storage as well through that one. So it can do absolutely everything. You can incorporate a Watt Pilot if you've got Fronius Fronius. So you can see all the smart charging in there. And it continually gets smarter. So those firmware updates that may occur in another year, in another year, the distributor says, okay, there's now a new regulation for export at certain times. Yeah. Or ways of peak shaving. So time of use tariffs are becoming more popular. Yes. All these yeah. little things that are happening, this can continue to get better and improve. Um, one other thing I was going to ask you is where is it actually manufactured? It's mainly cleanliness. Okay. So Aussie made. Started there obviously 10 years ago now. Five year warranty, so very different to smart meters and timers that generally have a one, one year warranty, 12 month warranty. So Aussie made, supporting local, very impressive device. Again, it just ticks every box in terms of where you'd want your equipment to be made with a warranty you'd expect as well. It is an impressive product. We're obviously installing a lot more of them as the years go on. Um, and I think we'll continue to see a big uptick in the amount of people that are installing these devices. It's obviously becoming more and more important to use more of your solar energy and also to be able to distribute it effectively to things like hot water and now electric vehicles. So um, thanks, Matt. That's uh, no wonder you love the product. <laughs> see why. I'm sure a lot of other people do. So if you need to hear more, get in touch. We'd be happy to help. Thanks, guys. Thanks.